What's up, Greenville? Where you at, man? Uh, I, oh, you told me that. That's, 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 right. Right. that's right. What's up, Greenville? <laughs> What's hey, up, Greenville? Hey. That's right. That's right. So uh, we are glad that you guys could join us uh, this Sunday morning, and we are um, we're going to make this a team effort on the delivery of this uh, message today about faith. So I got Jordan, who's going to help out. Uh, I know most of y'all know Jordan, but just in case you don't, that's her right there. Hello. And she is our director of music. And uh, we got, I oh know. That works. I, I try to be known as music. Uh, we got Shay, who hey. is our family pastor. Yeah, we got Ryan, who directs mm -hmm. our youth program and youth ministry. And yeah, then yeah. his number one volunteer, yeah. uh, his partner in crime, yeah. his wife, Chastity, and they do an awesome job hey. uh, with our youth. So, uh, so again, I appreciate you guys helping me with the uh, message uh, this week. It allowed me to take. Uh, a lot more naps because I didn't have as much to prepare, so I do appreciate it. But uh, let's start. I just want to start off with some questions. First of all, as it relates to uh, your parents, how serious were your parents with you about following rules and following the guidelines that were set in the household? So I guess that's just me since <laughs> you have the same parents in your city. Uh, yeah. right I'm not her parents. Well, so she, has, she has parents. Fair enough. I actually have some. Uh, so, anyway, but yes, yes. Uh, Chelsea and Jordan would be talking about us, but you go ahead and start. Uh, so my dad, he was probably, he didn't, he didn't punish us, I don't think, very often, but there was times where he worked graveyard shift, so when he would wake up, he would have like these like his eyebrows would go and he'd always be waking up from like a dead sleep his hair would be standing up and he'd yeah. be like oh no we woke dad up yeah i mean it's a little awkward because you're right here but i mean no that's all right we yeah. won't hold it against you during this uh, video mm -hmm. so. <laughs> right yeah afterwards maybe <laughs> but i mean i would say they took it very seriously they're both both of you guys were extremely consistent mm -hmm. we knew what not to do we knew what would happen we'd get a whooping or <laughs> You already always say, hit them where it hurts, not physically, but like, <laughs> that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, as we got older, you know, spankings don't work. Take yeah. take away something, you know. I've been punished from friends before, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and snacks, because that hurts. Yeah. And that hurts no little devils for you, Jordan, and she was devastated. <laughs> My sister didn't have a door, I just thought that was part of the construction. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've taken doors off. Yeah. Chastity had to have. Chastity had to have light bulbs for like a year. Is that what it turned out like? Yeah. Oh, well, oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. I've heard many stories about Ryan's mom and the clog shoes. So. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, well, Mainly threats, but yeah. But yeah. <laughs> it came out sometimes. Does she put them on? And that's <laughs> well, she put them on already. Right. She put them on you. <laughs> oh, on you? Okay, <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's. That's all right. So, uh, what, who are you more scared of? I'm curious. Both. Hi. Dad. 100%. It's funny because everyone always thinks like that knows knows you all. Everyone's like, oh, your dad's like so funny and laid back and easygoing, and your mom's like disciplinary. And um, for me, it was the opposite. I was like, oh, dad's particular. Mom, I could I could kind of talk her into some things like that. <laughs> I would I just She's knew how to talk her. <laughs> dad was a little bit more like. Nope, I already know what you're coming down. <laughs> yeah. So I always thought we were like bad cop, bad cop. It wasn't good cop, bad cop. To me, yes. You, uh, you both terrified me in a good way. Okay. Mom did have the look. I tried it with my the kid. Point it doesn't snap. work, but mom had the, the look. Snap. I knew as soon as the look. Yeah. I was like, oh, she's not playing. Yeah. My family, my mom was definitely a pushover, I guess. Um, she was just so quiet and timid that nobody took it seriously. Definitely my brothers, they didn't. It was just kind of common knowledge um, that they'd listen to dad and me. Not necessarily yeah. mom, because she didn't. <laughs> she, she was, was like, mom, Yeah, she was just so sweet so. about it, yeah. I couldn't raise her voice high enough to get anybody's attention for anything. Mm -hmm. um, but dad, I mean, I, I kind of always said with him, like, um, I was, this is how serious I took things. I was scared not to have the dishes done mm -hmm. when he came home. So that that kind yeah. of laid the groundwork of how it was. Yeah. To be scared not to have dishes done, you definitely aren't breaking rules, so. Yeah, 
You were definitely not a pushover. It was just. It wasn't like yeah, mom, yeah. she definitely got after me, but I just felt like out of the two, when you asked yeah. the question, for me anyway. Yeah. Maybe I just got on your nerves more. So <laughs> I just knew how to press dad's button. You just like that. Yeah. Sure. Mom and I are you very similar. So press each other's buttons. Yeah, so still to this day, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So for me, with the, that's right, I'm right. That's right. So for me, uh, you know, I mean, we definitely had rules without a doubt. But man, if you lied in my house, mm -hmm. uh, my dad's house or mom's house, it was on like Donkey Kong. That yeah. was like a deal breaker, and you were going to get the worst punishment and probably a whooping. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of you guys that too. Was, for mm -hmm. us, that was the, the cookie deal. story. You know, as long as you didn't lie about it. Yeah. 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 Just don't lie Just about don't it. Lie. Somebody I mean, snuck works. a cookie. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out. It wasn't me, man. I want to eat the whole thing. We have yeah. another sister not at the table. I know. I know. <laughs> so, yeah. She can't even defend herself. <laughs> That's a first thing. Yeah. Poor thing. So, so let me ask you, as it relates to um, rules and guidelines for, for our households when we were younger, and, and even today, I mean, are, are rules important? What What's... I mean, the purpose of the rules was the intensity. <laughs> Did you feel like that there was a purpose toddlers. when you were a kid? Let me ask you that. Did you feel like that there was a purpose when? I know I did, and I was. I always thought all the rules were stupid. And, oh, oh, <laughs> you know. That's now when she tells me to do stuff. So, you know, I kind of. I mean, I think there's a point where you start to get it as you get older a little bit, you know. But I think mine was as far as following instructions and being you know obedient to you guys was more out of fear than anything fear of disappointing you guys i think you learn from oh i got hurt doing this if it's like touch this don't touch the stove you touch the stove oh that's why they say don't touch the stove it was my attitude or my back talking or how i dealt with the situation mm -hmm. so in the process of it no afterwards when i'm like Oh, yeah, I could have talked a little bit nicer. So I have heard you all tell the kids, don't jump off the top bunk. Yeah. All right, so what's the big deal, man? You're taking all the fun out of life. I mean, that's <laughs> stuff that you probably did, right? And you well, thought it was a stupid rule. Why is it a good rule? You mean for, for specific kid? <laughs> for, Kaden, for Kaden? Because he dislocates his elbow every day? Yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, for, for our kids, it's mainly to co-pay them, to take their enjoy the way yeah, no, yeah. No. it's mainly yeah, yeah just to keep them keep them safe you know that yeah. kind of stuff but i think that when it when it comes to those rules when you're a kid you, yeah you don't think that there's you don't understand i guess you, you're naive or the repercussions or, right like, you're ignorant of and, and not in a in a bad way just the fact that you've been protected in that way and so you don't understand when you're younger you know like, yeah i was dang because i'm just jump off the top bunk or go down the stairs mm -hmm. with an ironing board or mm -hmm. you know, something Laundry basket. You know, you never did that? Are you speaking from personal experience? Yeah, yeah, we do that kind of okay. stuff. So it's still important for the grandkids still to know, yeah. right? Yeah, I was going to say that all, they're not all three of them, but the older two have had their fair share of spankings oh, yeah. at Mimi and Pop's house. There's a point in time when children need to do the right thing, and it's our responsibility to help them know what the right thing is. And so mm -hmm. I, I, ex I expect certain. Okay. Uh, certain rules to be followed so I, I don't I don't like when children are disrespectful and because we are boring oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. in figuring that out I'm yeah. boring that too all right so let's so let's take it everything we talked about into consideration as as we think about and answer this question why why is obedience to God our Heavenly Father why is obedience important to him he has all the wisdom mm -hmm. so he knows what is of importance and not you know and i mean and it, i always yeah. think of it you know again like a, a maze of him looking down and he sees that we're going the wrong direction and mm -hmm. and what chaos that's causing us in our own lives and he just like if you would just listen to me and go the right direction mm -hmm. you know it would be so much better for you and i think that um it's so important for him because he has this path he wants us to go on and he has this plan for our lives and when we do things our own way we we mess that up you know and I, it's so important to him because he knows what is possible for us what we could have mm -hmm. what would be good for us mm -hmm.
you know, he, he loves us. He, he wants good things for us. You know, you don't want to put your kid in time out. You don't enjoy that. But um, as far as the, the consistency in keeping your kids and holding your kids accountable and who that's going to hopefully make them be, that's out of love, you know. Doesn't want us to hurt or hurt others. Mm -hmm. I think we forget that, you know, maybe it doesn't hurt us when we sin or disobey or whatever, but you could be hurting someone else that's also his child. He wants us to enjoy life. I mean, right. clearly you can tell by creation and how he designed things that, yeah. that he cares that we enjoy our life, but not at the expense of hurting ourselves yeah. or eternally separating ourselves from him. And then that's when that changes. And the thing about uh, when we uh, obey our Heavenly Father, we're showing that we love Him. We're showing that we trust Him and we are confident in Him. And that's really what faith is. is showing love and trust and, and confidence in our Heavenly Father. And so um, I, I think that's really cool when you sit there and you think about that from a faith perspective. Yeah. And I want to just share... Uh, God's word real quick as it relates to God and obedience and uh, it's actually from 1st John so uh, John one of the disciples wrote this we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments if someone claims I know God but doesn't obey God's commandments that person is a liar and is not living in the truth but those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. So when I think about that scripture, one of the things that I think about is you cannot possibly be in an intimate covenant relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. You just can't be and choose to disobey Him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just not possible. It's kind of like being uh, us being in a covenant, intimate relationship, but I'm going to have an affair on her all the time. Mm -hmm. That, right? I know. She's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you, man. That's, that's it. Y'all just lost a pastor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just... That doesn't, I can't say that we're in an intimate covenant relationship and me do that because I would be lying about that intimacy or that covenant uh, that we have. So if, if we are in relationship with our Heavenly Father, we need, we need to obey. And if you want to know what that looks like, just look at the life of Jesus. Just yeah. read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John and see, you know, how Jesus obeyed his Heavenly Father. Um, all throughout scripture is pretty pretty amazing and pretty clear i'm curious were you all good kids or bad kids <laughs> good kid bad teenager mm. good backwards. kids bad teenager well, what do you mean you're backwards i was we know that okay. <laughs> bad kid, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah i was a, I was a probably a bad kid good teenager I like to think I was pretty good. You're kid. a good kid. I've always been like the good kid. Because I've raised you. So. <laughs> I have like multiple moms. Just even. Yeah, I've always just kind of been the goody two shoes. Were you a good kid or a bad kid? Um, I would. I would say a little bit of both. I mean, I was right. definitely a good kid. Uh, but I, but I made choices. We all do. Teenager, you know right. that. We're definitely against God's work. Yeah, I was you gonna know? say. I um, feel like uh, yeah, we're not but, talking about being perfect. But I would not. say, I would say over over it all, I would I would categorize myself as a good kid. I was a rule follower. You know, okay. I went, I went, uh, yeah. I, I got made fun of. You know, for following some rules and things in high school. You, you were the you were the kid in school that would tell all oh, the rest yeah. of the class, right? I, oh, I was the one that had to write the names of the bad kids I on was the board. The she was the one that told on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cons yes. I was more shy. Yeah, he was good. He's a role I follower, too, yeah. man. I was, I was good with, like, 
you know, the drinking, the party, that kind of stuff I was good with. And you were like, good at it? it? No. <laughs> you know, good with following the rules. When it oh, okay. okay. Yeah. But no. I did the, drink and drive. <laughs> but, but when it came to like, like pranks and, and being silly mm-hmm. with my friends in that way and and toilet paper pe- people's houses. Mm-hmm. You guys know a little bit about that. Before there was that I had to so, clean up. <laughs> it's ridiculous, I, and I was I the to- good kid. I toilet papered their house a long time ago, uh, and uh, almost. And it was, rained. I thought it was hilarious. Go. Yeah, Bobby loved it. He didn't have to clean it. I did. And uh, let me I ask you this: Have you ever TP'd somebody's house? Uh, no. Or done anything destructive oh, yes. to their property. Okay. <laughs> so, not, <laughs> just not too big of Just don't like being on the reverse uh, yeah, side of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for me, so I know this may come as a shock to you, but I was a good kid. But when I was bad, like all in on stupid. <laughs> so, yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, with kids, with with nieces, nephews, grandkids, whatever the case may be, when somebody comes up to you and they say, man, your kid just was so awesome, they obeyed, they played well together, how does that make you feel when somebody comes back and, and tells you how much they obeyed and followed the rules, whether it's a teacher or somebody where they just hung out? Uh, and mine depends on the kid, because uh, if it's Caden, I'm super shocked. I'm like, I'm sure, Caden, Caden, like he obeyed you, are you sure? No, but. My kid, that, like, that guy. Super, I mean, yeah, kid. super, super proud. And then for a second, I'm like, maybe I'm not screwing this up. I'm doing mm-hmm. something right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thinking, The other thought that runs through my head, if I'm to be completely honest, is you were good for them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about me, man? Yeah, yeah. Can I, can can I, I get, get a ball? Yeah. 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 Two hours? Yeah, come on, man. Yeah. 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 A little bit, of, little bit of both, being proud and then having like, Oh, you were perfect for them? So you do have that in you. Mm, yeah. I think it was the opposite for me. Like, it was my expectation um, that they were going to be good. I need to work on that. I've lowered my expectations. <laughs> I've lowered my expectations. I have, I have a different theory. Like, <laughs> if you don't set an expectation, then you can't be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of more my my strategy. With so, with so <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to answer this right now, but do you think... Do you think that we are meeting God's expectations? Our Heavenly Father? No. So one of the things that you had said is that if somebody was to tell you that your kid was all that in a bag of chips that day, you would be pretty proud. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I think that, again, we can't be perfect, and we can't meet God's perfect expectations. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, I think that there are times where um, – God is probably proud of certain choices that we make. I think that there are times when, much like um, someone viewing how your kids are acting is a reflection on you, and in in many ways, if they do well, it elevates you guys as parents. And I think that a lot of times that's the same way with us. When we obey and we're faithful and we're doing things the way that we're supposed to be doing and we're trying to live Christ's life, that we elevate our Heavenly Father, that we glorify Him uh, by, the, by the way that we act and the things that we do. We're basically, when our kids do well, they point to yeah. you as parents, and you know it draws attention to you guys and how well you are doing. When we do those things, it points to God and elevates Him and gives Him glory. Mm-hmm. And actually, you can read that a little bit in Matthew chapter 5. Jesus says, You are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Just like light in absolute darkness. So again, think of absolute darkness and being a light in that, in that darkness. Much like salt is to food, it makes it stand out, distinct, and light is that way. Right, it cuts through the darkness, and it's very distinct. It, you know, imagine pitch dark, and you're drawn to that light, and hopefully, that that is elevating God when we are light in the darkness. And and there's plenty of darkness out there, clearly. So if we can, even a little bit, just mirror the character of Jesus and be a light in the darkness, again, I think God will be glorified. 
uh, during those times. What are your all's thoughts about today? Would you all say that um, people are obedient to God today? What, what's your assessment of our culture, our society, <clears throat> whether it's the United States or just globally? Do you, as a as a human race, do you think we're obedient to God? No. Yeah. yeah. Far from it. <laughs> Unfortunately. So what about what about Christians? Are Christians? If you just take the Christian, uh, all right, I see a lot of that didn't much change yeah. stuff. Did it? I think there's a lot of things that have gone on for years and continue to go on that um, that as Christians we learn to tolerate. Maybe mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say all Christians by any means in that, but I think um, I think that there are things that we know are totally against God's word and we don't really stand up for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the sanctity or the holiness of marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. he looks at that as a big, big deal, a yeah. covenant relationship. And when we just, you know, don't look at it that seriously. Yeah. Uh, I think that is tough. Sexual immorality, mm -hmm. all kinds of sexual immorality, whether it be pornography or just sex before marriage, those types of things. Uh, you get into thinking about human trafficking and the stuff that goes on in the world and yeah. just greed. I mean, we worship, uh, we make idols of money and power and those types of things. And ourselves. Like, I think that's such yeah. a huge one. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Now yeah. in our culture, is like everything right now, I feel like it's like, do what makes you happy and right. and what you need to focus more on you and like are, are you saving time for yourself and what about you aren't you happy like I feel like that is just at least at my age and my experience right now in the culture that I'm in that is just it is so about mm -hmm. me and I'm like and it's, it's our like God tells us so opposite like he says like love him and so love distorted. others and it and yeah, it sounds yes it sounds, it sounds it good sounds, you're like oh mm -hmm. I should it's pleasing to the ears there are a lot of things that are getting kind of diluted, like mm -hmm. softened, the message is softened mm -hmm. to sound more appealing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it's getting so, it so it's starting feelings. to, yeah. So we right. don't offend and it's getting away from the truth, unfortunately. Yeah, totally agree. If you look at social media and just look how people tear other people down, uh, is, is make social media a bad thing when actually there's nothing wrong with social media mm -hmm. but the way people use social media yeah. uh, to tear other people down is pretty horrific uh, not forgiving other people you know just our hate towards people you know Jesus says that if you hate somebody that's murder in your mind and, right. and we shouldn't do that when you think of how many when you think of abortion and how many babies get aborted they say that uh, this is the World Health Organization estimates that approximately 50 million babies are aborted in the world in one year, in a That's year. Crazy. And when you think about that and you think about from an obedience standpoint, how God might be viewing just the way that we are living today and just that, and just the fact that we're turning from God, you know, um, whether we just don't have time for him altogether, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're so busy. We have our family lives. We have. I'm trying to be successful and, and build my retirement, my 401k, and I just, I just don't have time for God. Or whether it's just mm -hmm. I'm ticked off because God doesn't give me what I want, and therefore, you know, I just, I'm not interested. Those things are definitely uh, evidences of, of disobedience in, in our world today, and. Uh, if you think about when we celebrate heroes of the faith, if you go back and you think about Moses and Abraham and Ruth and, and um, Noah, Jesus, the disciples, I mean, we celebrate their faith, but what is it about their faith that we celebrate? It's their obedience. Mm -hmm. So obedience is the primary ingredient right. in faith. So th again, think about it. Moses led the Israelites. Uh, he was obedient to what God wanted him to do. When you think of Abraham back in the Old Testament or even Ruth, Mary and Joseph, Jesus' parents, they were all basically obedient and they trusted God. They, they trusted him and they, and they followed through on what he asked them to do. Even Jesus, the son of God, 
uh, climbed on a cross because he wanted to? No, he even asked Jesus or asked his heavenly father to, to take that away from him, take that responsibility away from him if, if, if it was his will. But he wanted God's will and he, you know, stayed faithful with that. When you think of the disciples, the disciples went out into a very difficult culture, one that they could be rest, arrested, killed, and, and they took the word out and they were baptizing people. Why? Because Jesus commanded that, our Heavenly Father commanded to them that they do that, that they go and make disciples. So, um, so when we're celebrating these heroes of faith, we're celebrating their obedience. And I think it's important for us to uh, remember that. What happens though if we don't obey God? What's the consequences? I think things are like when I think about same thing with what how I would be in trouble when I was younger because like things were withheld from me and I okay. think that like the same thing applies mm -hmm. um, with God. I think there's things that when I didn't obey and I've seen in my life when I didn't obey his direction and his word and what he wanted for my life things I could tell things were withheld from me God forgives you but that doesn't mean you know you may still live with the consequences of yeah. your actions or just what mm -hmm. you sow is, it, is always there yeah. you can't you can't he created the world in a, such an order that you can't avoid in a lot of times those consequences they are inherent in mm -hmm. our behaviors so he, he created the world that way I think a lot of times we think we can escape it. I mean, it can be physical, it could be mental, um, and it could be, I uh, just think it's important to remember, it could be to someone else. It could hurt someone else. So is it safe to say that much like w when we set consequences, when our children disobey or how our parents set consequences, there are consequences even with our Heavenly Father. I mean, obviously there's the consequence that if we, you know, uh, deny God that we're eternally separated from yeah. him but I think what we're talking about is just even as Christians that there are consequences when when we disobey but ultimately he's trying to teach us a lesson right the intent is for us to learn from our mistakes because at the end of the day when the, we have those consequences built in it's to to raise good kids good little citizens that, that are good little kids that grow up to be you know good citizens and ultimately God is trying to raise us in such a way to draw us to him it also mm -hmm. validates his truth and validates yeah. what right. he said right he's right. yeah. like see that is why that's there and that's why that's in place mm -hmm. same, same like when you're a parent yeah. your kid gets say, yeah. they, all the they time. fall down you're like that's why yeah, we I told you, you. Yeah. now you're seeing the ramification mm -hmm. you may not have understood it you may have just thought that it was just a just a silly rule but once you see that there is a reason and there is yeah. you know purpose in it then you get to see that and that and when we get those consequences it validates yeah. his truth it validates right. his reasons for having and wanting us mm -hmm. to be obedient so when we look at God's character all throughout Scripture Old Testament New Testament all of it um, and we see his character just like we said we we knew from our parents their character, who the disciplinarian was, who wasn't, or who when they woke up and their hair was sticking up and their eyebrows, <laughs> we knew their character. And I think we can learn God's character mm -hmm. if we are, are in His Word enough. And mm -hmm. clearly, there are consequences to our disobeying Him yeah. all throughout Scripture. So just to, to suggest or to even think that there aren't consequences today w would be silly. It would not be. Mm -hmm within the character of God. So I wanna share uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, which says, look, today I'm giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse. You will be blessed if you obey the commands of the Lord your God and that I am giving you today. But you will be cursed if you reject the commands of the Lord your God and turn away from him and worship gods you have not known before. So when I sit and I think about that scripture and he says, look, you, you have a choice to obey right now. Think about with kids. Have you ever had you get ready to start a day? Maybe you're all going to do something special with the kids, uh, go to the park or an amusement park or something like that. And it's like on the way out to the car, they, they already start getting crazy. All the time. And, and, you, and, you, and you grab them and you're like, 
look, you have an opportunity to have a good day or for this day to be cursed. And I, and I so think in, in many ways, reading Deuteronomy, that's kind of how I read that. It's like, look, you have a choice to obey and this be an awesome day and you be blessed. Yeah. Or you have a choice where you could be a moron and there are going to be consequences to your actions. And, and that's how I read uh, Deuteronomy. That's the Bobby Martin paraphrase. Yeah. 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 I also want to share what James uh, says. He says, don't just listen to God's word. We read this last week. Mm -hmm. uh, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. And then verse 25 says, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. So in verse 25, he says, if this, then this. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you do what it says, if you do what I say, then you will be blessed. So mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say that if we don't do that, if we don't obey him, then we're That's not going to be blessed. He's mm -hmm. going to withhold that blessing. I think circling back around to, you know, taking this idea and going back to when, when you have a relationship with the, the parent or, you know, in that, in that circumstance, when the child has a good relationship with their parent, right, there's that faith that's built in what the parent says mm -hmm. versus it just being a hardcore, like, just setting rules and just being, just being this big disciplinarian mm -hmm. that doesn't have a relationship with their kid. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's, it's that, I think that correlation sure. is seen. People because, think that uh, God is like that, like the guy's just like, yeah. These yes. are my commands. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's do I, think I like, say. I think that's yeah. the difference yeah. is when that when that clicks that when you have a relationship with God mm -hmm. and you see that He wants the best for you and you have that faith Absolutely. in Him, then you get to see that peace that you're like, oh, okay, like I'm getting this. Okay, maybe I don't understand why He says this because I think with the Bible a lot of times I still do this. I see some stuff and I'm like, why? Why is God? Why is this something for Him? Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily understand. Mm -hmm. But if you know Him, have a relationship with Him then you believe in his goodness and right. that the intentions are good. And you know that he has that in place for a reason. Right. So you may not know the reason, but you're willing to follow it or believe right. it. The rules and consequences yeah. take a whole new meaning. So check out the scriptures. Uh, this throws me away. This is God talking to Solomon in the Old Testament in Second Chronicles. God says, At times I may shut up the heavens, so that no rain falls, or command grasshoppers to devour your crops, or send plagues among you. Then, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Now, when I read that, and, and I'm not, Give me I'm not, I'm not even trying to. Uh, come across as I'm some kind of prophet and I, I see it today but when you sit there and think of today we've got the coronavirus uh, that is all over the world We're deal we've dealt with fires in Australia that has burnt up much, much of their land in Australia we've had you know 5.7 uh, earthquakes in Utah if you go to Google and you look at locusts in Africa or South Asia, this is all just stuff in 2020, right? And you were in Vegas, I think, last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. And you look at the locusts. They, they have absolutely invaded Africa and South Asia, and they are eating up all the crops and everything. And when I look at the things going on in our world, and then I look at... God talking to Solomon and that was one of the things that basically he said look if you don't obey this is what's going to happen you know is it possible that God is is we're, we've disobeyed and he's trying to get our attention and get us uh, redirected again I, I'm not suggesting that that's absolutely the case but it sure is possible we know we live in a fallen world this world is jacked up after Adam and Eve you know everything yeah. you know um has been bad since then as far as sin and, and how the world works and and you know now we have storms and tornadoes and 
we don't just live with the lions, now they want to eat us. <laughs> you know, those kinds of things. And, you know, the world has just changed. So whether it's God punishing us today, and I'm not saying that that's absolutely the case, or whether it's just a fallen world that we're, we live in, one of the things that I think we can look at is Romans chapter 8, which says, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So whether God is trying to get our attention and, and you know, these consequences are coming into play with the stuff that are, is going on in this world, or whether it's just a broken world and he's trying to ultimately use that uh, for the good of his purpose now. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is what it is, but God's going to use it. What are some things that that you guys are seeing or that you have uh, learned from uh, that you uh, feel like that are lessons for you as you've gone through this time with the coronavirus and the things going on? Or how do you feel God has used it for good? Just what are your observations? What's the impact of our culture and our world today for you guys? I mean, for me, I just have realized that I have a very false sense of security okay. in the things that I put my priorities and my time in. These things that seem so like routine, it seemed like they would never change. Getting to go to work, you know, going to visit family and friends whenever I want, you know, and, and visiting them or um, going to the grocery store and getting milk and uh, toilet paper, you know, and all these types of things, like, I thought that's what you get to do, like, you know, and like going to church, and that was never, I never thought that, that those types of things would be taken away, mm -hmm. and that's where I put my priorities and my time, and and even just this like idea that I'm invincible, and I think as a society, a lot of us think that way. Um, for the for the most part, I think I don't know if it's because where we live, uh, you know, we're in the greatest country in the world. We always talk about that. I I never fear of attacks. Um, I mean, even going through 9/11 in second grade kind of experiencing it. It just doesn't come in my mind that that like could... Almost like a TV show or movie. Yeah, it didn't know. feel real. I, you know, I know it's, it was it's, real, but right. yeah. Right, it yeah. doesn't seem like, I don't fear that on a daily basis of like, sure. oh, are we, is this the day? Yeah. You know, where, you know, I never would thought that I wouldn't be able to receive the care I need if I got sick. That was never a thought yeah. in my mind. Yeah, somebody just told me today that they went by the immediate care center and there's a line literally oh outside the immediate wow. care center where people are waiting to be treated. Right. Wow. I, I never thought never, I would see that. No, no, yeah. Sorry. Exactly. And I don't I don't know if it's because of, you know, where we are. I don't know if it's based on who we are, you know, I'm twenty five year old pretty healthy person, you know, I don't think about that this day is a blessing and the things that I get to do are a blessing, um, even the little things. Um, this virus, this sickness is something that could take every single one of us. It could not, I'm not trying to be like a pessimist or anything. I'm just saying that we don't we're know. starting to, yeah, we're starting to have this fear of, oh, you know, this virus doesn't care who we are, sure. what our status is, how much money we have, if we're young or we're, we're old or whatever. It is a virus that is going to potentially infect us, um, cause us to get ill, and could, it has, whatever the percentage could be, has the ability to take our lives. And that idea that our very lives are temporary, mm -hmm. we know that, but yeah. it's just not something that I have spent a lot of time on. Mm -hmm. And in this time, there's been so much fear um, around it because I think we're realizing that our lives are surrounded by this false sense of security mm -hmm. because everything is in the things that we do um, in the lives that we live here and it made me think to um, a scripture in Isaiah where it talks about humanity is like grass and all of its goodness is like flowers that will wither away and fade away and that's where I feel like we are, we're realizing that. We knew that, nothing yeah. has changed. We talked about this earlier, nothing yeah. has changed. There's a virus, but there were sicknesses and things. Yeah. I could be hit by a car yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we could always have lost church. We, we don't know these things, but we're realizing that, oh, these things can be taken away 
like that. Mm -hmm. But I love the end of Isaiah where it says, but God's word will be here forever mm -hmm. and stands firm. And that will never change. And so in this time, we could focus on all the things we're losing and focus on like, oh my gosh, like what's going to be here. But yeah. when it shifts and if this time allows us to focus on the fact that God will be here forever mm -hmm. and his word is true. And even if everything gets taken away past this coronavirus, that still is true. Mm -hmm. All this stuff could be taken away, but God's love is forever. Mm -hmm. That changes everything. His love, his promise, yes, everything. everything. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's hit me hard. Yeah in this time yeah. I saw yeah. something else it said like no matter how much our plans change God's plan never Correct. does yeah. it's, oh that yeah. freaks me out but also comforts me yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a weird thing yeah. but well I know for me um, being a family pastor um, and having to close church down mm -hmm. and try to think out of the box on how to um, to help our parents to actually get to do this at home has been pretty eye-opening for me, um, especially when, you know, I, I kind of work with that whole orange concept anyway, where we as the church partner with parents uh, to, to be the spiritual leaders of those children, you know, and not to try and work separately against one another, but to combine our influences together. Because I, I hang my hat on that so much, I felt like I let my parents down, mm -hmm. that I hadn't prepared them enough for this. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, jokingly, I've, I've heard from different parents along the way about um, uh, this whole, now that they're homeschooling their children, they're like, oh, my kids are going to learn how to carry the one now. Like, common core is going out <laughs> yeah. the door, right? right. Like, <laughs> you know, I've heard this, this new, <laughs> there's a new, uh, newfound appreciation for parents or, or for teachers, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, it's, yes. it's huge now. Um, and, and I've also heard, and I think actually, Chester, you even said it, that um, having a, this newfound appreciation for our leaders at church for our kids. Absolutely. Um, and what we're trying to teach them there within that building itself, because now we're, we're putting all of that responsibility back on the parents. Mm -hmm. But when I think about that, I mean, that's exactly what Moses was charging the parents uh, in Israel. And I'm, I'm going to read this out of Deuteronomy. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. And we're doing a whole lot of that right now. Mm -hmm. That's about all we can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all we have uh, available to us right at the moment. And I just love that. Um, that the curriculum that we use has allowed that to take place because the parent cues that we've sent home uh, all these years that we've been using it does just that. It has a little section in there for the drive time. We don't walk along the road anymore hardly to get from yeah. one place to the other. Sure. But we're driving. Here's what you can do when you're driving. Be Here's intentional. What you can, yeah. Yes, to be intentional. Yeah. What you can do at bath time and bedtime and meal Absolutely. time. And I'm like, we have these resources at our fingertips, but did I prepare our parents well enough, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I took that on um, really hard in understanding that. And so I'm, I'm trying to, I guess, pedal through this and, and figure out ways that I can teach them from afar now and how mm -hmm. I can get resources into their hands and challenge them and charge empower them, them and empower yeah. them yeah. Um, to do what we were charged to do from the very beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I probably allowed our parents to lean more so on um, the church sure. itself and not in their own capabilities sure. of what they could do at home. Absolutely. And so um, I really have learned from this on how my job is the family pastor and I really put more emphasis on the children and I really needed to work more with our families. And so equipping, um, equipping and empowering yeah. them. And I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that Throughout this, and as, as I'm trying to navigate these new waters, as long as well as every other church, you know, in the world's trying to do this as, as well, that I'm hoping that I can get parents to understand that the time that we have is so valuable and don't use that time trying to figure out how much you're going to leave for an inheritance but what you're going to leave for a legacy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like, that's, that's my new charge now mm -hmm. is how, that, how I can partner with parents to help them understand that they get to be making disciples of their little yeah. disciples, yeah. you know? Which so, ultimately yeah. affects not just legacy, yes, legacy, but eternity. Uh, absolutely, yes, absolutely. So, yeah. 
I know for me, like, and this is just something that always sticks out to me. This is like just in general in life, but definitely, especially since like the coronavirus and everything, it's just like my gratitude for things. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's, I was talking to Jordan earlier that it's like before all this happened, we are as a people, not everybody, but as a people, the majority of the people, we are like whining and complaining because we're so busy and like, oh, I just don't have the time for this and I don't, everything, like I'm too busy, That's it's too much, too much, too much. And the pressures of all this stuff. People and are then, running their kids, all yeah. these different activities. And I'm, like, I'm one of these people. 100% oh, yeah. Okay. And then like using stuff as an excuse even, you know, I'm like, well, I just don't have time for that. Even just thinking about you talking, talking about with the children, so often I just took that for granted like that I don't spend as much time with them at home doing the very thing I'm supposed to be doing where I'm just like relying so much on the teachers and relying so much on you guys at church um, to do some of the things that I should be doing here at home, but I'm too busy. And I'm like, and it just whining and com complaining about that. And then now it's so crazy like to see how quickly things have shifted and has changed, but we're, we're, we tend to do the same thing. We tend to just like, now we're complaining because, well, I'm at home with my kids all day and I'm exhausted. And now, and now like, what am I supposed to do? I just want to get out of the house. And now it's like, we've become, we're just this complaining people. Like well, everything is just like that's whining. Wow, wow, wow. Our totally. sin, like everything we complained this about before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Everything yeah. that we complained about before, our circumstances can drastically change to fix all of those complaints. And now we're going to complain again because mm -hmm. it blows our mind. And so I've been having so many conversations with Ryan about just being so thankful for it. And like what you talk about Romans eight twenty eight and like using things for good and, and my, and what is even my purpose right now? Cause we have, you know, we have a purpose in each thing. Like what is my purpose right now and where I'm at in this, you know, circumstances that, that we're in spending this time with my children and being intentional and just being so grateful for and like noticing all these things that I'm too busy otherwise to notice but now I've gotten the blessing of all of this time spent with them and this time I get to focus on my husband and and nature like I like lately just getting those beautiful days like walking around um and getting that and it made me think about um in Philippians uh it's chapter four where Paul is talking about like I've had a lot and I've had a little, and I've learned to be content, you know, in both circumstances, no matter what, and just, just sitting in that. And then also just, like, seeing people, how I view people, and that comes with being grateful for them. Like I mentioned, like, the teachers and stuff, and about all the people, like, honestly, like, my husband is a firefighter, you are a firefighter, and I, I as much as I appreciate you, I try not to think about what he actually has to do uh, on a daily basis, because I'll go crazy, but just being so thankful for all the people that don't get to stop like they're working so hard the doctors and these nurses that don't get to go home to their families very often and spend this time this blessing that, that we're complaining about yeah. just but i like that you said just <coughs> see them right yeah, just seeing them seeing i can think them. about so shay and i the other day went through the rallies drive through and we just ordered rallies right and the guy at the window I think we had an intimate moment. I was like, <laughs> I just want to thank you. I love I, you. I appreciate you being out here. You are essential. And yes, I mean, yes. I, but other times it's just like, thanks, you know. I know. But, grocery store workers, but like the stocking our shelves. But the circumstances oh, yeah. that we're in yeah. allows us to appreciate and see people. And I love that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, just gives you a new lens to like mm -hmm. look at look at people through and like how many people have I missed this whole time yeah. and all these people like even I think about my grandparents like my I probably driving her nuts but like with my granny I've talked to her so many times like just like I'm just I just love you and I'm just like please stay home mm -hmm. and I'm just so nervous but it's like shouldn't I worry about her well-being like all the time uh, you know yeah. it just yeah people are calling on their so, their elderly neighbors and yeah. checking in on them it's like why didn't we do that before I know. Right. you know so is God using these this situation to, to accomplish that yeah. so. that's good you got something or are you just yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking through. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so be grateful for me. I, I think I, I go to like the theology side of things and thinking about just this idea of how God handles us and thinking so on the spiritual level and on the physical level. But when you think about this this coronavirus, like how we are handling each other right now, should be 
it is out of love, but from a distance. You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. hey, over there, you need me to throw you a sandwich? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but don't come there at six don't feet, you know? And, and I say this because as a first responder, like even as making making runs and, and you know, we have terminology that we use as far as airborne PPE. So that means protective equipment that you need to put on and gowns and gloves. And, and it's like, you, you're, you almost are keeping at a distance from people for a reason. Right? You notice that they're sick, you notice that you need that distance, you notice that you need to take the precautions, if you will. And and just playing that back and, and seeing that if we if we look at what Jesus did and how he reacted, what like right in the Bible with the lepers. Right? Like and it, it says in Matthew eight, um, two and three it says, A man with leprosy came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. And I think that's just a, that I never even, that never even triggered in my mind, but just that, that idea that he touched him. Like when we're going out and I'm, I'm a first responder and, and there's just this like nervousness for all of us, right? That there's, that, that potentially can be sick people that's not even knowing it. And he knew, he knew he was sick and still wanted to reach out his hand and, and he still touched him and he said, I am willing. Um, and I think that's, he says, I am willing and I can. And I think that speaks volumes to us because it, it, as, as people, I think as we are living this life, um, a lot of times with this, with, with God, like we are completely disobedient. Like there's no question. Like if we, if we just even do the, the standard of the, of the Ten Commandments, like we all fall drastically short. We all are terrible with it and we are all sick. We are really, really sick. And he could act like we do and, and like fleeing or, or, you know, keeping his distance but he he takes a different approach and he takes mm-hmm. a crazy approach that, that's a radical thing and just to think this has brought to, to my attention that that G, that God didn't react and he doesn't react that way to our disobedience in fact he, he reacts in the complete opposite way and knowing that we are sick and knowing that we are sinful knowing that we are short he still stepped down came in and he touches us in, in the place that we're at. Instead of an anger and rage, he comes with a crazy love mm-hmm. and a compassion and a willingness to get close to us, even knowing that we are fallen and shortened. And, and I think that, to me, has been something that is, has been a, just a powerful thought for me. Yeah, to just okay. think that he came in the flesh. Yeah. He, yeah. You know, that yeah. is exactly what you're saying. And the other part about that story that I love so much is, um, you know, Jesus could just say it, mm. and yeah. that would happen. It, people right. would be healed. Yeah. So he didn't have to touch the lepers. He right. chose to talk to them, and that intimacy of yeah. of a it's touch. What they needed. Right. It's what they needed Nobody as much as yeah, as they much had, as yeah, the healing. Six foot roll, like, yeah. 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 It was more. Yeah. It they were. They were out of the city. Side, yeah. Right. They were. They were. They completely kept out of the city. And also that that idea that with with this this pandemic. Um, and, and, and all this stuff going on, knowing that Jesus didn't always come and just touch the lepers, but he went to all the sick and he went to all the people. And he knew that he was going to a cross. Like, he knew mm-hmm. that the sickness of this world was going to kill him. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I think that's what, that's what in this pandemic, that's what we do. We got this fear of, of all these people and, and we're putting our masks up because we're afraid of giving to our loved ones and to the people. That sickness, we're afraid to get into us, but God... He takes it differently. He went. He went on a, a yeah. radical love mission where he was like, "Well, it's going to kill me, right. but I'm going to do it anyway." Yeah. And I think that's mm-hmm. a that's a powerful thought. Yeah. So I know uh, just to kind of bring this to a close. I know one of the things that I've learned or a takeaway or the way God's using this is is just how much more I appreciate the church, mm-hmm. the gathering of believers, and and being isolated from them now. You know, imagine if we didn't have social media and videos yeah, and being able to text and a phone call and do video chats and FaceTime. Imagine if we didn't have that. And But even still, it falls short of gathering together publicly. So I'm excited to look, uh, to get together with everybody mm-hmm. again. I think we all are. I'm going to hug everybody. Uh, at yeah. I'm I'm a, I know you hug everybody. Uh, Jordan's even going to hug me. So here, here's, so no yet, then. here's what I want to challenge you all to do um, after uh, this uh, gathering is over. I want you all to continue to gather, and I want you all to talk about 
uh, what lessons that you've gotten out of these circumstances that we're in right now. I'd like for you all to talk about it as family and friends. If you don't have somebody to talk to, call me. Uh, we'll chat about it. But I want you all to talk about it. How is God using this time for good? What are you seeing? What are you experiencing? What are you hoping that when right now the world's kind of slowed down, when the world speeds back up, what is something that you hope to take with you and mm-hmm. to keep with you, much like the things that I think we talked about. Or leave behind. Today, or leave behind, yeah, absolutely. Correct. Mm-hmm. So would you mind to close us in prayer? Sure. Let's all pray. Right. All right, let's but, pray. Yeah. Go ahead. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we uh, we just come to you in awe in just the way that we are able to continue to gather together as believers. Um, it may look differently than what we're used to, but we are just grateful that we still have the opportunity to do so. We know that you say when two or more are gathered, you are there also. We are holding on tight to that promise, Father. We thank you for that. Um, we just pray, God, again, that in the midst of the chaos in our world right now, that people would just lean into you and feel your comfort and your peace, the only kind that you can provide us um, that we are truly searching for. I pray that people lean into that right now. I pray that people are able to um, love on their family and their neighbors from afar and make sure that they're taken care of in the ways that we have seen um, just so so proudly uh, in the past couple of weeks. I pray for our leaders that have to make the tough decisions that they do. I can't imagine the sleepless nights that they're going through trying to make the right calls. And um, we just want to lean in on them as well um, and, and respect their authority. Um, you put them in place for a reason. And we just are grateful that there are people who care about others uh, in the way that they do. Uh, we just are grateful again for the healthcare workers, um, the people who are continuing to make sure that the world is still spinning. Uh, as far as having food and groceries and gas and all the essential things that um, that we have opened our eyes to, um, that we are just so grateful. We ask for protection for them as they try to continue um, to help each and every one of us. We just thank you, God, again for your word that we can always fall back on, that uh, we can find the promises in there uh, in every chapter. We thank you for your son. We thank you for... Um, just the sacrifice that he made that again uh, as Ryan had mentioned that we are just able to uh, take from his example to lean in uh, and be radical about the type of love that we were able to give we just thank you father for loving us it's in your precious son's name we pray amen Amen. 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 all right you guys enjoy your all's conversations uh, together Uh, we love you guys we miss you all Peace. peace all right